This is the word of God's grace brought to you by the Standing Church International. We're a life-transforming church with a vision of raising a supernatural army for the Lord. Get ready to be blessed by God's word and experience miracles. Receiving God's mercy. Titus 3 verse 47. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which is shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Matthew 20, 27 to 34. Whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. That's the highest manifestation of God's mercy. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still, okay, and called them, and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them, and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Psalm 145, verse 9. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Are you part of all his works? His tender mercies are over all his works. God's mercy is speaking for you. Now. God's tender mercies are over all his works. One of the major parts of the Old Testament ark was the mercy seat. And everything that was put in the temple in the Old Testament was a mirror of what was in heaven. Because in Hebrews chapter 8, it says that he told Moses, build according to the pattern that was shown you on the mount. So Moses was shown something in heaven, and that's what he was building on earth. And to show you that this thing was a replica of what was in heaven, as soon as Moses was done building that temple, the glory of God descended upon that temple. And you know that temple had three courts. You had the outer court, the middle court, and the holy of holies. Inside the holy of holies was where you had that ark, the ark of the covenant. I've always marked that place in my Bible. Every time I see it, I don't know about you, that I will commune with you from the top of the mercy seat until I saw that what God was saying was that every miracle that I'm going to work for you in the Old Testament will be based on my mercy. I will speak to you from on top of the mercy seat. The challenge now is that God now says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion on. But in the New Testament, after Jesus died and rose again, he democratized God's mercy. When the disciples had a meeting in the book of Acts chapter 15, if they didn't have that meeting so that the gospel could spread to the Christians, today Christianity will have been like Hinduism. Do the Hindus do evangelism? <laughs> So Christianity will have been zoned to a Judaic, you know, religion. But then they had a meeting, and then in Acts chapter 15, God said something that is bringing back the tabernacle of David. What was this tabernacle of David? You remember that story when David was bringing back the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant was going to fall down, and Uzzah put his hand there, and then God killed him. And David provoked, ah, what now? Eventually, when they were going to bring that ark back, and David was dancing and killing, sacrifice every six, six steps. Then, David, he brought that ark into a tabernacle. And the fact that the ark was in a tabernacle and was not shielded in a holy of holies made people to be able to come and rejoice around the presence of God. Because David was like a New Testament prophet living in the Old Testament. So, David now said, I want to build a temple. And then God said, ah, no, you cannot. Your hands are filled with blood because when you join the army, you cannot do well for God again. That's not what you're saying. Uriah's blood, the blood of Uriah, the Hittite. Because Solomon that built the temple, didn't he kill many people? So Solomon came and built a temple. But Stephen, later in Acts chapter 7, says God does not live in temples made with hands. 
Jesus comes and he's walking through the street of Jerusalem. And then he looks and says, bring down this temple and in three days I will build it. You know, if you are living in face me, I face you. If they bring you out of there, you know you will never want to remember where you are coming from. If somebody can say, do you remember when you say, I don't know you. You don't remember, I've never met you before. And you should not be the type of person that reminds people of their past. At that time, when you, 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 your head corridor like this, you remember. You can't do great things that way. So you don't want to go back there now. But when it was time for the presence of God to go back in the New Testament, in quotes, if they want to build something, shouldn't we be taking the ark back to the temple? Why are we taking it back to the tabernacle? It's because in the New Testament, God's presence has been democratized. We are not taking it back into the holiest of all. We are taking it into that tabernacle of David where we can be dancing around the presence of God and seeing miracles per second per second in our lives. I'm a candidate for miracles. This is why it says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. That means that in the New Testament, I have access to mercy. So this is the challenge of the New Testament. The Old Testament people, they didn't have this challenge that we have, which is that this faith that borders on arrogance. In the New Testament, we have the sure mercies of David. He said, I will give unto you the sure mercies of David. What's the sure mercies of David? All the promises that were given to David. Thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. You know, I have made him my firstborn. I had all the kings of the earth. God packed all those promises and put it into something called the sure mercies. So that is why we are going for interview. We can say, in the midst of a thousand people, my own is exalted with honor. Why? Because he has given unto us the sure mercies of David. It's called sure mercies. So the challenge now is that we have rights, but the challenge is learning how to put one leg in the place of our rights and the other leg in the place of his mercy. Two people that Jesus commended their faith in the gospel. One was the centurion. The other was the Syrophoenician woman. For the centurion, he came and said, speak your word only, and my servant will be you. Jesus said, wow, what a faith. Jesus commended because that was faith that was based on authority. He said, I'm a man under authority. I say unto one, that was somebody that understood authority. Another woman, he said, you, madam, the bread of children should not be given to dogs. Huh? She said, even the dogs can eat the crumb. That's mercy. Jesus looked at her and said the same thing he said to the centurion. Oh, woman, great is your faith. This is another great faith. Because two signs of great faith is the leg in authority and the leg in mercy. Your miracles are coming to you by the mercy of God. Oh. Your financial increase is coming by the mercy of God. Oh. Your sickness is being healed by the mercy of God. Oh. Somebody has been suffering from a right-sided abdominal pain for a long time. In the name of Jesus, it is crushed now. That spirit of infirmity that has held your abdomen in the right side is crushed right now. In the name of Jesus. We must understand the mercies of God. We must understand the healing mercies of God. This is how we have perpetual miracles in our lives. This is why the people that have a good understanding of this word of faith, they are very humble. Though. Anyone who does not understand it is proud. The type of people say, you use drug? No, 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 no. Look at what Paul said. Philippians chapter 2. Epaphroditus was sick. Nigh unto death. For I, an apostle, I said sickness around me. God forbid. I stood up. Is that what Paul said? What did Paul say? He said, God had mercy on him. And on me too. And spared me of many sorrows. That's humility. We are drinking of this fountain of mercy. Yes, God's mercy is speaking for us. If you want to perpetually see God's goodness, mix it with mercy. Yes, because what goes hand in hand, surely goodness and mercy. When you are high on mercy, you will see goodness every day. Yes, God's mercy is speaking for me. So people boast of their ability to pray. But they will not say, ah, I pray though. I stood in faith. Then they will not see somebody with cigarettes in his pocket, jumping up and down. He's the one that got healed ahead of them. They are confused. Somebody that just came to church, that you know when he came, you know other things to do you. Then the next thing he said, I just sold my first 10 million. Ah, 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 ah. Me, I've been here for a long time now. It's mercy. God's mercy is speaking for you. I've come to reveal the mercy of God to you. Because Mary said that he has filled the hungry. When she was under prophetic unction, speaking when she went and met Elizabeth, she said he has filled the hungry, but he has sent the rich away empty. Jesus said to the church in Laodicea, in Revelation chapter 3, you have said, I am rich, I am full, and I have possession of all things, but you are poor, you are wretched, and you have nothing. Because God has called the rich of this world poor. In my heart, there's always a craving for God's mercy. 
when I'm pleading my case before God, my heart is fixed on the mercy of God. When I'm walking in faith, standing in faith, sowing seeds in faith, you see God's mercy, my eyes are on. My eyes are on the mercy of God. So, four things about the mercy of God. One, the mercy of God is always abundant over all. The power that is present in a place can fluctuate. But you see, when it is mercy, mercy is always present. And this is why you will see people crying, shedding tears when they experience some miracles because they feel like, I, I didn't deserve this thing now. God will give you what you did not deserve. Amen. I know you have prayed and prayed, fasted and fasted, believed God and believed God, released your faith and released your faith. It counts, but keep your eyes on the mercy of God. Now you are asking, what more will I do? He said, no, start thanking God. What else will you do? You have done everything you can do. Thank God and trust in God's mercy. Relieve yourself of stress. Relieve yourself of pressure. God has risen for you. The mighty man in battle has stood up on your matter. This is why people cry when they get miracles. Some of your greatest miracles, they happen when you are least prepared. Sometimes even when you are grumbling. Because as Angel Gabriel appeared to Zachariah like this, he said, eh, and now you just they come. He said, that you have been looking for child. Angel Gabriel came. He said, Oh yeah, now your child has come. He said, eh, now, now you just they come. MTN network is bad in heaven. God, I've been sowing seed, sowing seed. Didn't God get all my alerts? The angel said, Be done for now, so that the miracle can happen. Because even while you were still grumbling, God's mercy was still speaking. People tend to condemn people and say, you don't believe again, Abby. You don't believe again, Abby. You don't think, eh, eh, eh. you might be tired. In the midst of that, God's mercy is abundant. The last time you said your confession might be three months ago. Now, Satan has told you that. When last did you confess? Now, you see, you see, and you want things to happen. You are not building up your confession. You're building up. God's mercy is speaking for you. You did not follow instructions. That's why you fell into trouble. Yes, God's mercy is speaking for you. My Joshua father tells the story of a man that they were in crusade many years ago. Then the man came out and was sharing testimony. I'm healed! I'm healed! And cigarettes was jumping from his pocket. As the cigarette first jumped up like this, the crowd gasped. Ah! Because all of them are religious people. Because when God's mercy is working, man, moral people will be angry. There are many times it's God's mercy that speaks in our lives. Whether you have dotted your eyes or you have crossed your teeth, God's mercy is speaking for you. He's speaking for you. Amen. One of my spiritual father's friends was sick. <laughs> he was so sick. Then one day his wife called. They were sick captains that time. He said, Ogamuyo, oh, speak to your friend though. I don't understand. What, because he was doing valedictory speech already. By this time he was bound in wheelchair. So he was already saying, take care of the children. Make sure they walk in the way of God. For you to take care of... <laughs> so she called. Talk to your friend though. That type of person, does he have faith? Say, you have to have faith before anything can happen. <laughs> Just release your faith for the mercy of God. Because you guys say, I don't have faith for my bone to be mended. How will I carry this child? You will carry. How will I do this money thing? You will do it. The doctors have given up on me. You will still come with your basket of harvest. You think you are sick? Your life has ended. My friend, don't worry. Next year, you will be coming talking about how you sold 100 million. We'll not be telling you that, ah, but last year you were crying that doctors said, because the mercy of God is terminating sickness. Amen. Amen. Your greatest problem is not God's greatest problem. Yes, sir. God can squash it. Yes, sir. Yembre de beketiasa. Kela niyama nata. Zebra da. So, okay, what your friend do? What your friend do? My sister said, Lord, mercy. Paratiasa. Let your mercy speak. If everybody can believe before they are healed, what will happen to madmen? And it's because of this type of mindset. They say, the person has gone into coma. They say, hey, he can't believe for himself again. You are in trouble. You are not in trouble. God's mercy can stand. There's no case that is too far gone for God to retrieve. God is retrieving your case. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we are like them that dreamed. As the I started praying, oh, Lord, have mercy. In the night, he had a dream. Then he saw the friend falling down into a cliff like that. Just going. He said, then he ran and stretched and caught him. That was God's mercy. And pulled him back. That was the mercy of God. John G. Lake said, there's something about when your faith lays hold on a loved one and refuses to allow them go. There's something about it. Hold on. That's the mercy. One day, I told somebody, I said, I'm seeing your father. Leg injury. Was the father in faith? 
And I said, that leg injury is healed. She sent a message to her father. The father said, who is your pastor? When she got back home, he said, why? He pulled up his leg. He said, look, he's dried up. And I said, oh, yeah, sit down. Let me tell you a story. And then say, ah, one, two, three, 47 years ago, eh? That's when this saw appeared, though. If this saw is older than my marriage to your mother, we have been doing anniversary now. We'll soon do golden jubilee for it. But one word. Yeah. When he was not believing for anything, no. When the daughter was not believing for him, oh. That word of knowledge, what will you call it? Did she write expectation list, Lord, are you my father? She's already used to the sickness. It's the mercy of God that brought that thing to me right here. And I said, I'm seeing someone. God can take me into your house. God can take me into the places that you have been having challenges so that I can see. Therefore, from today, I command whatever has been holding you is broken down. Look, oh, we, we dedicate your children on this altar. Fire, tear, separate, tear, kaba, ye kata. Whatever God has not planted in your body, he's crushed. Even if you have said valedictory speech, I retrieve you. Some of you have not told anybody your valedictory speech. You have been rehearsing it in your head. This morning, the mercy of God is speaking for you. God's mercy is abundant over all. I just saw the spirit of death breaking over somebody now. It shall annul that covenant that you have with death. That covenant that death has had with you, had with your family, I break it. Amen. Suicidal ideation. Voices whispering to you. You are good for nothing. You are good for nothing. Pushing you into depression. It's the spirit of death. You think it's depression. It can be a spirit of depression. But this one I'm seeing is the spirit of death. I judge it. The stranger shall be afraid <laughs> and flee out of their close places. Deliverance is coming, it's coming to somebody. That is broken. That is broken. I just had a snap inside someone's abdomen now. The evil spirit that has held your abdomen that has been causing problems is snapping now. Letting that thing go. Lower abdominal problems recurrently. Recurrent, 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 recurrent. You might not even be feeling any symptom now, but it has been coming again and again. They have done scan. They have said, this is the problem. This is the problem. It's an evil spirit. He's checking out now. He's checking out now. Let that thing break. Let that thing is over. It's over. Strangers shall be afraid. So number one, God's mercy is always abundant overall. Number two, the mercy of God does not condemn you. Doctors might have given up on you. God does not. God's mercy, it will take a junkie, clean him up, and make an evangelist out of him. God's mercy can make an evangelist out of that type of person. The mercy of God swallows judgment. That's why when it is working, the moral people will be angry. You know, all those type of ladies that people will tell you that if you know anybody in a circle, don't ever be friends with them. You will go down to hell straight. That's how she was. Now she got born again. And then Association of Gossiping Women Fellowship in church. You think you can cheat God? You want to bite your cake and have it? That's morality. That's morality. So you just come like this. Get born again. Everything will not be going in your life. Karma must speak. Be waiting now. In the New Testament, there's no karma. Yes, God's mercy does not condemn. If you don't know this thing, to receive miracles will be hard. Though. Because the reason your finances are dry is because you think you made mistakes before. The reason your health is down is because of previous mistakes. I made mistakes. I forget about the mistakes you made now. God's mercy does not condemn. The mercy of God swallows judgment. God's mercy is not fear. God's mercy is not fear. Because that woman got married ahead of all of them. You know who she married? The joy of many sisters. That man that is at Nitana Excellency. The joy of many sisters. Some of you are going to go and drop offering together. You drop the offering. Then all the other four sisters will say, why were you looking at him like that when he was going to drop? Looking like that, oof. That type of brother came and married her. Everybody said, no, no. You can't cheat God, bad Beleo. When she gives birth, in fact, she won't even be able to give birth self. 
you that you have committed abortion, 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 abortion. You have wasted all the blood of human beings. God can forgive any sin, though. But you see, the one that involves blood. No sin is greater than the blood of Jesus. Maybe you are condemned. Maybe the devil has been telling you that the reason some things have not been happening in your life is because of some mistakes. Some people will even abort babies, and it's not good to abort. I'm not censoring that. And then we'll be hearing the cry in the night as they are sleeping, crying every morning in their marriage. They will dream. They will say, Mommy, you killed us. You killed us. Now they are running mad. Marriage has almost scattered. Why? Because somebody didn't just look at them and say, Look, go and sin no more. But God has had mercy on you. My sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. My sins are forgiven. Look the devil in the eye. What's the worst thing you have done? The blood of Jesus covers for it. Look at yourself as one with a clean slate so that you can receive everything God has for you. You can be coming to church like this and then the devil will just create one argument between you and your spouse. That's how you do You come to church and say, hey, and today especially a miracle service. How are we going to receive now? Satan has finished us. That is condemnation. God's mercy is speaking for you. I know it's good to be arguing, but God's mercy is speaking for you. Long and short, she got pregnant too. They thought that she would not deliver. She gave birth. Who did she give birth to? Bouncing baby boy. Like what? Basketball. <laughs> then they say, ah, no, no. Let's look at the second one now. The second one will be twisted and mangled. When that one came out, who was that one? Baby Nigeria. Cool, cool, cool. You know there are babies that when they bring the baby, like say, carry the baby, say, no, thank you. By the time you say, Moko, see everything. But you see some other babies, cook, cook, cook. That's the type of baby she gave her to. <laughs> God's mercy. There's one of our people like that too. That when God opened the way of marriage for the person, everyone that knows the person says it's not possible. This person cannot be the first to marry amongst all of us. Our life is not fear. And God too is not fear. God is merciful. This right you are standing on, forget about it. God's mercy is speaking for me. Glory to God. Self-righteousness smells. Live a holy life, but trust in God's mercy. He says, God shed his mercy on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Never live in regret. Learn from your mistakes, but move on. Stop living in regret. And don't tie any sickness, anything you are going through to past mistakes that you have made. God's mercy has swallowed up your infirmity. He has swallowed up your iniquity. Even if what you are going through is something that has an identifiable cause, HIV. That's an example. That's not the only example. STD. Even if there's an identifiable cause, God's mercy has blotted out the past. That's the gospel message. That because of God's mercy, God does not deal with us based on our past. He deals with us based on the possibilities of our future. So he will not say that Abraham was an idol worshiper. He will call him a father of many nations. Because that's the part of Abraham. God doesn't even do as if it exists. He was worshiping idols for almost 75 years of his life now. You've not thought about it before. Yet, when God came, I will not you have. God does not deal with you based on your past. He deals with you based on what he's going to do with you. He will do dangerous things with you. Yeah! Enchantments are broken. Yeah! The third one, the mercy of God is cried out for in faith. The power of enchantments, they are broken. Yeah! There is no enchantment against Jacob. There is no divination against Israel. According to this time of life, it shall be said, What has the Lord done for him? For he shall lift up himself like a young lion against the prey. He will not settle down until he has devoured the prey. I'm seeing someone's mouth strengthened. I rise for you. Whatever has been biting at your life in sickness, I rise for you as a young lion. I rise for you. I devote that thing over your life. You will see good man. You will abuse him. He's the one that will be giving you 5,000 steeds for soup that you go and meet. That will be troubling your life. If not that a person is under a spell, making one mistake is not an enchantment. But making repeated stupid mistakes, there's something wrong. Enchantment must be broken. 
some of you is family problems some of you people in your family have been having problems giving back you you have not gotten there but you're already afraid ahead of time you have seen the problem coming today i've come as god's servant to break this thing i've come as god's servant to break the hold of these challenges over your destiny His chariot like a wild wind for with fire and with sword shall the Lord plead and the slain of the Lord shall be many I'm seeing God releasing people from a demonic darkness bondage 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 it has affected their finances it has affected their health it's darkness that has been around them. they might not even know but as I'm speaking the hand of God will rest on them now as the power of God comes on them, that thing is breaking off. I see one of them. God is dealing with reproductive challenges. Paya, the other. Recurrent sickness. Migraine headache. Paya, the other. Zombre, the other. Uncontrolled bleeding. It's a work of the devil. It's crushed. Power of enchantment is broken. Marital delay is one of the things that is breaking off. Childbearing delay is one of the things breaking. I've seen God doing reparative work on someone's womb. Oh. That evil voice that has been whispering into your ears in dreams of the night as you are moving through your day in the name of Jesus. His hand is broken. You are my own. You are my own. Uh-uh. <laughs> Who's own? The voice has been telling you you belong to me. There's nothing you can do. You will not escape. Eh. Tell the voice that a prophet has come. I've come, I've come as a prophet because indeed you are escaping. The voice of death is silence. I'm seeing people, you are being released from the effect of strange voices. Answer the voice because you will live to declare the glory of God in the land of the living. You will live, you will live, you will not die. Rise and let the cry of the Spirit come out. The way the cry of faith comes is that it will forget religion, forget everything. It overcomes every obstacle to get to the Savior. Every embarrassing obstacle. There's no embarrassment with this cry of faith. It is fixated on what it wants. Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy upon me. What a refreshing time in the word it has been. We believe you've been blessed by God's word and have received encounters for mighty miracles. To download more messages like this one, please visit our website at www.thestandingchurch.com. There you will find an abundance of resources to help you grow in your Christian walk and deliver miracles of destiny to you. If you have never made the decision to be saved and would like to receive Jesus into your life or rededicate your life to Him, please say the following words out loud. Lord Jesus, I confess you as Lord over my life. I believe that you died for me and that God raised you from the dead. I receive all that you have made available for me through your death, burial, and resurrection. I declare right now that I am a child of God. I'm free from sin, and I am the righteousness of God. Amen. Congratulations, you are now saved. We're so glad you made the decision to receive Christ today. Please write to us at plus 234-813-477-3145 to share your salvation testimony with us today. In or around the city of Ibadan, We invite you to join us at the Dominion Center for each of our services in the week. Join us on Sundays for our transformational Life of Victory services by 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Our prophetic lifting services also hold on Mondays by 5 p.m. And our prayer and communion services on Fridays by 5 p.m. Each of these services are put together to deliver God's word and power to you and bring you into the life of prosperity, health, dominion and liberty that God has ordained for you. Not in Ibadan. Don't miss out. Our services and special meetings are streamed online via our Mixer and YouTube platform at The Standing Church. We look forward to having you worship with us. God bless you. We cannot wait to hear your testimonies and we look forward to having you connect with us. Please write to us at info at the standingchurch.com or call us on plus 2348-1347 73145 or connect with us via our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube at The Standing Church. We love you and God bless you.